And once again, I really want to speak to this, this whole thing about Thatcher's legacy. So while I'd say we should celebrate the death of someone like Thatcher who did such great wrong and caused such great suffering to working people, we would be naive. We would be naive to think that her death somehow marks a turning point. The mainstream British political parties all across the board, of all stripes, have for a long time internalized her ideology, her unbridled embrace of capitalist rapacity. And it is a bitter legacy for the people of Britain and the world that can only be undone through hard struggle. She has indeed cursed the land of my ancestors, that's Britain. Working class people who had fought for so long and were finally beginning to gain some justice in the aftermath of World War II and the dissolution of large sections of the British Empire and the imperial establishment and the establishment of the British welfare system, the welfare state, Thatcher demolished those hopes. And for this, she cannot be forgiven. She cannot be forgiven. It's unforgivable, this act. And she died without ever seeing a day in court, without ever being punished. Without any measure of justice being given to those working people whose the lives she destroyed. The lives of millions. The poison that she injected into a system already tainted by centuries of imperialism continues to destroy lives and ruin families across Britain to this day and is an integral part of a global capitalist system that spreads such poison on a global scale. For this crime, there can be no forgiveness. And frankly, by this point, only a revolution will set things right. Thatcher proved that the working class cannot rely on the welfare state to secure justice and dignity for themselves. It cannot rely on the capitalist state to make concessions, to make their lives livable. Ultimately, it will go back on those promises. It will go, roll back those concessions. It will take back what it gave. What it gave. And working people will know no peace or justice until working people take power for themselves. Nobody else can do this for them. They can only secure justice and dignity for themselves if they take it through class struggle. That really is the lesson of history. That's the lesson of the downfall of the welfare state. Workers cannot rely on capitalism to give them a decent standard of living. Because under capitalism, the worker is essentially an object to be exploited. That's all the capitalists see working people as. Bind all their rhetoric, all their fancy words, all their propaganda. That is the hard truth. We're exploitable, we're expendable. And we're exploitable to serve their profits, their interests. They only make concessions under great, great, great pressure. I mean, think about what, what it took to make them make the kind of concessions that they made after the Second World War, when the welfare state was first set up. It actually took a revolution in Russia, the endurance of that revolution over decades. You know, so you had a socialist superpower existing in the world that was, that was seen by the West, right, West as a major threat. They were afraid of re working class revolution at home. They were afraid the fact that so many people came back from the Second World War, you know, veterans who knew how to fight, knew how to shoot, knew how to like, you know, who were, who were 
if they rose up and fought against the capitalist class, the capitalist class would be finished. You know, so many, and like a whole, there was a whole history of like working class struggle throughout the, um, the 19th century, the 20s, the 30s, you know, huge, um, huge strikes, working class mobilization, union movement, all that kind of stuff. All these things came together. It took massive, massive effort to even get this kind of, these kind of concessions out of the capitalist class. And of course, then they were rolled back after a few decades. It shows that working people cannot rely on wringing concessions out of the system. They ultimately have to take power for themselves. That's the only way they can attain any permanence of the gains that they make. That's it. That's the only way they can be sure that those gains will not be reversed. That's the hard truth. That's the reality here. That's the reality that Thatcher's legacy really highlights. Regardless of how secure we think things like public health care are, they are not secure. The capitalist system will do all it can to roll back those gains. As Michael Parenti said, to pull us back to 1900 when, of course, we had no rights. To unionization, no rights to health care, no rights to education, um, no rights to like any, even sanitation or decent housing or anything. The only right we had was the right to sell our labor, to be exploited by the capitalist class. That was it. And the capitalist class sure as hell liked it that way. And they want to get us back there. The only way we're going to see justice for ourselves, brothers and sisters, is if we take control. That's reality. And really make it so, through that action, that no criminal leader like Margaret Thatcher ever rises to trouble us again. And wreck that kind of destruction, wreck that kind of distortion, and destroy what we have built.